Hello, PWJ fam. It's been too long, hasn't it? For those of you who don't know, I'm a piano with Johnny student and also embarrassingly a private piano teacher. Seeing how that bossa nova challenge went and the accompanying feelings afterwards, I think I might need to go back to some basics. All of those mundane exercises that I grew up with that made me want to kill myself. Now in my last lesson, I searched bossa nova easy way out. This time we're just gonna search easy way out, literally. I'll take anything. Learn to play ragtime piano in seven easy steps. I feel like the easy way out meter is here, and I'm looking for things fundamentally easier, but when I search it in the bar, they get fundamentally harder. We're just gonna put in easy. Enough with the ragtime! Fine! Mundane fundamentals. There were no results for the search at this time. Fundamentals. Key of E major. All right, that is too fundamental. Okay, okay. Jazz fundamentals. You know what, fine. I'll go back and search exactly what I did for the Bossa Nova challenge because remarkably, in the back of my brain and sarcasm, I was kind of moderately interested in that exercise. How to practice scales for jazz piano. You know what, Johnny? I'm gonna trust your judgment on this one. You have an excellent show of skills, and I'm a fangirl. What's up, guys? Johnny May here, and welcome to this week's quick tip where I'm gonna teach you what I think is the best exercise to practice your scales if you wanna play jazz piano. One of the biggest issues I see with piano students is they practice their scales one way. They practice them up the piano, and they practice them down the piano. And this is a great exercise if you wanna work on technique, but it's a very limiting exercise because you're seeing your scales from one angle. See, if you wanna play jazz piano, you need to be able to play your scales starting on each note of your scale. We actually call these modes. Oh God, I knew that they would come back to haunt me. Modes? You know, this reminds me of that other, other Johnny Mays video that I watched while wasting time the other day. Transitioning scale tones or something. What was it? Ah yes, chord enclosures. And enclosures are basically a very simple way to get some of those very cool sounding jazzy notes without having to learn a ton of scales. Perfect, easy way out. Don't have to learn a ton of scales. Now, when I was first learning jazz, if I was playing this chord, I was playing these white notes. and it sounds kind of, of vanilla. So how do we get some of those cooler sounding notes? Well, we want to use enclosures. So on a very basic level, an enclosure is where we take any one of these notes of our C major seven chord and we enclose it with the surrounding notes. Yeah, it doesn't look too hard. Let me just try and uh, read this straight off the internet and see how we do. give you a tempo range eight at 120 BPM. Johnny May, you're so nice to give us that BPM anywhere between 20 and 400 as long as we hit one note that was in the lesson plan. It's the effort that counts. Wrong notes is okay guys, it doesn't matter if your audience ever loves you. You know, everybody has their bucket list items, but one of mine. I would have really loved to see the point at which Johnny May's piano playing was underdeveloped. Unfortunately, this guy was probably like six years old playing Rachmaninoff and those days just don't exist. I get enclosures. I look at the lead sheet. I understand the concept, but I think I need another nine months to apply it. I need to tinker for a moment. Give me a minute. 